In this video, I'll show you why you should never use sequence questions in your Adobe Captivate projects. Uh, well, maybe I'm being a bit um, intense with my phrase, should never use sequence questions, but uh, ever since Adobe Captivate released a new feature, a couple of features or a couple of versions ago, I've pretty much stopped using sequence questions. I find that they don't always work as expected. I find some of the users who, who interact with them don't particularly appreciate them. Uh, but let me take you through the two different versions that you can set up in your course anyway, just in case it is something you decide you wish to do. Um, if you take a look at the quiz properties inspector here for this sequence, you can see that there are actually two different types and I've set up the two different types here. The answer type is either a drag drop or a drop down and I'll show you those differences in a second or two here. And of course a lot of it is set up much like your regular quiz questions. You have an on success action, you have a, a on failure action and of course you can set up uh, different buttons, clear, back, skip, and different captions uh, appropriate for the appropriate feedback. So let's do a quick preview though so you can see the difference between the two. Uh, we'll just do preview next five slides which will work fine. So here we go. This is the first uh, type of sequence where the user has to drag and then drop the item into the correct order. So if I want to uh, start off by choosing greet the customer, which is actually step one, I drag that and I need to place it obviously above qualify the customer, but that doesn't work in this case. You have to literally drag and drop it to the exact position. Um, we need to swap three and four here. So I can't drag three just simply below four. I have to drag three onto four, pushing four up to three, and that's a little confusing. But I managed to get it in the right order. I've had a few people complain about that. Um, you know, it's it's difficult. Uh, some people will think about dragging, let's say this object needs to go between here and here. So where do you place it? Can I put it between? That doesn't quite work. So, you know, how do you do that? Well, you just you know, it works, but it just there there is a, a little bit of a of a strange behavior that you have to overcome. So let's submit that. I should get that correct. Yep. Here's the other version though. This uses a series of drop down menus where the user can then select what they think the correct answers are for each of the four steps. So the first item is greet the customer. Interestingly enough, I can actually select the wrong or the same answer four times. So that adds a level of uh, complication, I guess you could say, uh, that could confuse your, your uh, learners as well. Um, let's see here, demonstrate the product and then ask for the sale. So there's the correct order for the four sales steps here. Um, so that works as well, but again, it's not really an elegant solution. So um, I'm not crazy about that solution there. Um, the final solution is what I've come up with here, and that's a simple drag and drop. And I know it's nothing um, groundbreaking or revolutionary, but I think it's a more elegant solution when you're asking your learners to put objects or, or items into a particular order. So what you can simply do is create a placeholder for your drop targets, one, two, three, four, and then simply place these steps. And you can actually do quite a bit with the drag and drop. You can control how many objects can be dragged into a single drop target. Um, and you can ensure that they can't put multiple steps in the same spot and other things that make it more confusing. Let's preview this and I'll show you, I think why it's a more elegant solution here. So let's do the next five steps here. So here's my drag and drop sequence solution here. So the other thing too, with those, um, with the drag and drop, with the drop down menus, 
that's actually a two-click process for your users. With drag and drop, I can simply one click, one click. You see how beautiful that looks too with the zoom in effect. One click and one click. And I could even go so far as to auto submit the question once the learner has dragged over all the objects. So, and I can of course move objects around and have it actually snap back those wrong answers if uh, if need be. So, you know, I can put this in the correct order that I think it should be there. Let's just take a look and we'll hit submit. Correct. So, got perfect. That's awesome. <laughs> Guys, if you like the videos that I'm producing for you, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel. If you agree with what I've just talked about here with sequence questions versus drag and drop, I'd love to see your comments in the comments below. Um, also, if you thought this video was helpful or useful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up.